Hi world, it's Keely and I'm back for another video. This is going to be my January week one wrap up. So this wraps up the end of December and then the first couple days of January. It is January the 4th and I thought I would go ahead and tell you guys what I've read in the last week. So what I've been doing is writing down everything that I finish as I go and it just helps me keep track of everything. The first thing that I finished this week was The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. So I've said before that I've been making my way through Sherlock Holmes this year. I started last month and I finished The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes which is the first set of short stories. There are 12 short stories and I've been listening to the audiobook narrated by Stephen Fry or reading it on my Kindle and it's just been a lot of fun. I've really been enjoying it. Um, so next up is the Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes, which is another 11 stories. So my plan for the rest of January for Sherlock Holmes is to read the memoirs and then read the final book in this collection, which is The Hound of the Baskervilles. So I'm super excited that I was able to finish one collection of short stories so I can move on to the next one. Then I read another short story which I actually forgot to get off of my shelf and that was The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by, I think it's, is it Irving Washington or Irvine? I'm not sure. I have a book that's a collection of short stories primarily featuring uh, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow and what I've been doing is reading the main story and then passing it on to my red shelf for now. I do want to read the other short stories in these different collections, but I'm trying to catch up with my backlog of like big, not necessarily big, but like really well known short stories and make my way through them. So I read The Legend of Sleepy Hollow and it was really good. I've seen many movie adaptations over the years and so I never really knew what the original story was. And the original story was good but kind of weird. <laughs> it's about a teacher that lives in this small town and he's kind of like, every, all the women, all the girls like look up to him because he's so knowledgeable about things and he falls in love with this local girl that's the daughter of a guy that's got a lot of money in the town and so he wants to marry her but there's a rival guy that shows up and so they have like a clash between the two of them and it's all like interspersed with what the legend is of the headless horseman in this town and it was really weird. <laughs> I think I prefer the movie versions honestly but I enjoyed it anyway. The next thing that I read, I actually got ahead of the game and I finished A Tale of Two Cities in December. So I listened to the audiobook of it and I absolutely loved it. I don't know if I knew what A Tale of Two Cities was about, but I definitely didn't think it was about like revolutionaries. And it was really interesting, really weird. It primarily follows this guy and his daughter and he they thought that he was dead because he had been imprisoned for a while but then it turns out that he actually had gotten out and was hiding as a shoemaker but he they kind of also thought it was just this crazy guy and so you follow him and his daughter throughout the story and you learn more about him and his background and why the things happened as they did while also following the daughter and it was really weird <laughs> but I really liked it the uh, book I don't know who narrated it. It was just some dude. I got it from my library and it was really good. I totally became attached to the characters. There were definitely parts that were just kind of like really wordy and I was zoning out for a little bit, but overall I did really enjoy it. So I finished my second Dickens before the year started, which is pretty amazing because now I only have 10 to get through for 2021, which is amazing because a lot of them are huge. After that, I read another short story. I read Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. I read Robert Louis Stevenson in the past. I read Kidnapped and Treasure Island, and I definitely like Treasure Island more than Kidnapped. I do really like his writing, so I do want to read the other short stories in this collection. But again, like I said, I am trying to read the main one that is most well known and then go back to the other stories at a later time. I listened to the audiobook of this one narrated by Richard Armitage and it was brilliant. Definitely recommend listening to his audiobook narrations if you have the chance because they're really good and I really enjoyed this one. Um, it's my first time ever actually reading through the story. I've obviously heard about it, seen the movie adaptations, read other books inspired by it, but never actually 
read the story. So it was really good. I definitely enjoyed that one. Then I finally read Foundation by Isaac Asimov. This is one that I've had on my shelves for a long time. It's one of my fiance's favorite series of all time. And he said that the first one is good, but not as good as other ones in the series. We have the other some other ones on our shelves. I don't know if I'll get to them this year because this was my priority, not necessarily continuing on, but maybe I will. I read this one in one day because it was really good. It's 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 less than 300 feet. It's about 300 pages, honestly. And it was really good. It's a, I guess like a, I would consider it like a classic for sure sci-fi about this guy named Harry Selden. And he has, they call it like psychohistory. He's a psychologist, but he's able to predict the future. And he can predict that the planet, the universe that they know will basically implode and they'll have to start over in a certain amount of time and the government is like okay not sure if they believe him and so he gets the opportunity to then catalog all of history and so the government sends him and a collection of scientists that he chooses to a planet like on the edge of the solar system and is like here you guys do your stuff over there while the rest of us are over here and so you just kind of follow him at the beginning and then the next section you follow someone that worked with him and then the next section you follow another people that are like tangentially related and I think there's four sections and of the four sections the last one was the one that I didn't totally love. I don't think I really understood what was happening. I have to talk to my fiance more about it because he knows a lot more about them having read them. For my first time through, I did really enjoy it and I'm super happy that I read this one because it was really good and it did not take long for me to get through at all. Then I read two more of the four novellas that my fiance got me for Christmas. So I read The Order of the Pure Moon Reflected in Water by Zen Cho. This one was really good. This one is a kind of religious based one. The Order of the Pure Moon is a religion and they have like magical abilities and you follow some I forget what they call them are they assassins yeah they're well they're it's like a mixture of thieves and assassins that are kind of this band of just like outcasts that are making their way through the world and this nun joins up with their group and they don't totally know a lot about her at first and so you follow them as they're trying to find different items that they can then sell kind of like on the black market and it was really really good. I enjoyed all of the characters. But this one was really good and I would highly recommend it. And the other novella that I read that he got me is The Haunting of Tramcar 015 by P. Jelly Clark. This one takes place in Cairo in the early 1900s and there are definitely magical systems and the jinn have created the transit system so everyone just kind of accepts that like yes there's magical things in the world but the general population doesn't really talk about it because it freaks them out. So there's this other kind of group of people that are part of this ministry of like magical things and they go and investigate when there's possible like supernatural beings and that kind of stuff. And so they get a report that this tram car is haunted and so they have to go into the tram car and figure out what is haunting it and figure out how to fix that because now the tram car is out of commission while it's haunted and it was really weird really really good <laughs> I love the two kind of investigator guys and then also some of the outside people that they interact with there is one character that's kind of a side character that I really enjoyed that they never really explain what her backstory is and so I don't know if there's going to be more stories if there are more stories in this universe but it would be really cool if there are so that I can learn more about what this other person was because they keep mentioning it but I don't know that it's ever resolved. But that one was really good, that was a lot of fun. Then another short one, I finally read Animal Farm by George Orwell. This is another one that's been on my list for a long time. It's not one that I ever had to read in school. I honestly knew nothing about this <laughs> going into it. I knew it had like some political stuff but I had no idea it was like an actual farm of animals. <laughs> Basically there is this farm and at the beginning of the story the animals are really tired of the humans basically enslaving them and so they overthrow the guy that runs the farm and the animals decide that they are going to 
rule the farm. And so they change the name and call it the animal farm. And you just follow the different animals <laughs> throughout the story as they are kind of making their way in this new system that they have. The pigs are the ones that are kind of in charge because they're very knowledgeable. There's a lot of like parallels between real life and the animal farm. So I can definitely see what it was saying and why it was such a big deal and why schools would have you study it. But it was really weird, really good. I, it did not take me long to read because it's very short and I'm so happy that I finally read that one. It was weird. <laughs> and then the final one that I ended up finishing this week is The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. I've mentioned this before, but again, this is not one that I ever actually read. I think at one point we were supposed to read it, but like there's that whole list of books that you read in high school that I never read. I can, I only remember reading two of them. I read To Kill a Mockingbird in sixth grade, and then I read Frankenstein in twelfth grade, and I never read anything in between. I basically just read the spark notes if I had to. So I know The Scarlet Letter was on there, The Red Badge of Courage, Great Gatsby, all of those. Haven't read any of them. So this one was one that I wanted to read because I've heard that if you read it outside of a school setting, it's actually a really good story. And this one, again, I don't know what I thought it was about, but it had nothing to do with that. I thought that this was like a plague Thing, that it had to do with like scarlet fever but it has nothing to do with that it's about this woman who moves over to the united states her husband is over in england he says like go over get stuff set up i'll stay here and finish stuff up and then i'll meet up with you but he never shows up so she's kind of the outcast of this town and then she's pregnant and she has a kid and they brand her basically with a scarlet a on her body and the a stands for adulteress because she ends up having a kid and she won't tell anyone who is the father of the kid but they know it's not the dude from over where she's from so you follow this like hardcore puritan town along with her hester who has the scarlet a and it's freaking weird it was so weird <laughs> there were different characters and i was like okay i hate you um but i do definitely agree that like if i had to read this in school i probably would have hated it but i did really end up enjoying it i listened to the audiobook of this one and i got it from my library i listened to it yesterday because it's only like five or six hours and i just played video games all day on my day off and this one was really good so i'm happy again that i have been marking off some like big books for me, big titles that I've been wanting to get to. That's not all that I read, those are just the things that I finished, so I'll tell you what I'm currently reading. I started reading The Count of Monte Cristo the first two weeks in January. I'm reading the first 31 chapters to stay on track with my read-along. So I've been listening to the audiobook and I am up to chapter 11 now and it's really good so far. It's about Edmund Dantes who is going to marry this girl but her cousin wants to marry her and it's all kinds of salty that this other guy wants to be with her and that she turned him down like you're my cousin no and so he has this whole plot to get Edmund imprisoned basically and taken out of there because he said like I don't want you to marry him and uh, like I'll just kill him and then you have to marry me and she was like well if you kill him I'm gonna kill myself and then you're screwed either way so it's really just like her gross cousin that starts this whole thing but you follow Edmund now as he is being imprisoned and it's really good so far uh listening to the audiobook I'm happy that I'm doing that because I suck at French well I suck at pronouncing anything that's not English and especially French for some reason my brain just hates trying to make the vowel sounds and I can't do it and so having a narrator that can speak French is very helpful as far as like making sure that I'm understanding who the characters are. I did notice though like I flipped through at different points when he was reading it and realized that my version is different from the narrated version that I've been listening to. I don't know that it makes a huge difference because like it's still basically the same story but just some of the sentences are different. I don't know if it's going to make a huge difference so I'm not technically reading this version because I think the one that I'm listening to is the is it the unabridged version or something like that? I don't know but I am really enjoying it so I have until the middle of January to read up to here which is the first 300 pages the first 
31 chapters. And another book that I'm reading is another one that it's I'm listening to on audio, and that's David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. When I was trying to figure out what Dickens I wanted to read next, I originally wanted to read either Oliver Twist or Great Expectations, but then I got a trial of Audible so I could listen to Sherlock Holmes, and I saw that Richard Armitage narrates David Copperfield, so of course I said yes. And so that's what I've been listening to. And this one, I am over 100 pages into it. I am at page 123, chapter 10, and I am really enjoying this one as well. This is one that I picked up because it's supposed to be Dickens' favorite novel that he wrote, and it's semi, like, autobiographical, but it's about this guy named David Copperfield, and so far in the story, he just told, like, the story of how his mother gave birth to him and the kind of the first years of his life. So up until the point that I'm at now, he was sent to live in a, not necessarily a boarding school, I don't know what you'd really call it, it's kind of like a workhouse because they thought he was a bad kid and it's really, it's been really interesting so far. I am totally enjoying it, but I've been bouncing between Sherlock Holmes and Count of Monte Cristo and David Copperfield because these are the three biggest books I'm reading right now and so I've been wanting to make like a little bit more progress on each so I listen to a couple chapters of this and then a couple chapters of the Count of Monte Cristo basically every day to try to get through it. And the next thing that I've been reading is A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. This is one that I got for Christmas that I wanted to get to. I want to read all of the books that I got for Christmas within the first two months of the year. That's kind of like an overall goal that I have for the year is any book that comes in to my collection. I need to read within the first two months of getting it, with some exceptions. <laughs> Mostly like the classics I know are going to take me a little longer, but all of the other books I want to get to within the first two months. And this one is really good. I'm about halfway through, and this one is about magic systems. It's about the main character who uh, is staying at this magic school, the Scholomance, and she is basically just interacting with the other students, and they are trained how to fight different like magical beings and so you follow her as she's making her way to graduation and dealing with the other students who think that she's an outcast and it's really really good so far she's super sarcastic uh very funny and i'm just really loving this one so those are all the books that i am currently reading but i have a big stack here of books that i want to get to in the next week we'll see how that goes the first one is flowers for algernon by daniel keys this is another one i know a lot of people had to read for high school but i didn't i think my fiance did i have no idea what this one is about but he said that it is kind of sad so we'll see but it's just one that i want to get to additionally i have some more that i got for christmas that i want to read so i'd really like to read gideon the knight which is about lesbian necromancy so this is supposed to be really good. I also want to get to Half Witch by John Shostall, which is supposed to be about dungeons and witches. <laughs> and then the other one I got for Christmas that I want to get to is the final novella, which is This is How You Lose the Time War by Amal L. Motar and Max Gladstone. And this one is supposed to be amazing. Beyond that, then I just have some other ones I want to read. So I really want to pick up Sherlock Holmes vs. Cthulhu by Lewis. Is that Lois? Lewis? H. Gresh. This is the first in a series about, I think it's about Sherlock Holmes. Uh, well, I know this one is, but I don't know if the other ones are. I also really want to start Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. I also want to read Great Expectations because I just got the audiobook from the library. And then the final one that I also really want to start is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. That's a lot, I know, but I don't know. I'm going to try to get to... Oh, I forgot two. I have two more. I really want to start Hyperion by Dan Simmons because this is one that I've had on my shelf since I started Booktube. I actually have a third one I forgot I was reading. I'm reading The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb, so I need to continue this one. And then I also realized I have The Dispossessed to read, which is in the Hainish cycle, and I think technically counts as like a prequel to The Left Hand of Darkness because it takes place, I think, before. I'm not positive on that. <laughs> but I have a lot of books that I'm really excited to get to, and who knows, I'll probably end up picking up ones that I didn't even mention because that's kind of how it goes. But I had a really good reading week, and I'm hoping that I can continue that. January is starting off pretty strong. Let me know what you guys read this past week, what are you looking forward to, and that's it. Thanks for watching.